Well, hello, church family. We are so glad that you're here, wherever you're joining us from. If you're watching on your phone, if you're watching in a living room with your house church, know this, we prayed for you to be here, and here you are. And we have an amazing service in store for you today. But before we jump into that, if you can do me a huge favor, do us a huge favor, we ask everyone to do this. If you could text the keyword, The Rock, to 88202, and click the link, fill out that short form. It just lets us know that you're here. It helps us stay in touch with all of our church family. And speaking of having your phone out, if you have not already downloaded the Rock app, I'm telling you, we put a bunch of great stuff on there to resource you, to help you stay connected with our church family. In fact, you can use it today to follow along with Pastor Jerry's sermon notes as he is sharing with us. And so download that by going to your app store and searching Go to the Rock. And so if you would do that, would be great. And for those of you who are here in the Anaheim area, in the Southern California area, or the Western half of the United States, and you just love really long road trips, come and join us here live in person uh, socially distanced, we'll have masks on and such, but we are here in person every Sunday morning on our Anaheim campus uh, at 10 a.m. So come and join us. We'd love to see you here. But now for this service, let's do this. We're going to enter into a time of worship. Let's prepare our hearts. Let's again not let the words just go by on the screen and we're watching. Let's engage our hearts and prepare our hearts to receive from God, but to worship and to love Him. Come on, church family, let's worship together. Unchanging one to him the end, the race. Lift up your hymns of praise. For all the things he's done, for all the things to come. Lift up a shout of praise Him with all of the music, praise Him with all of the nations, praise Him with all of creation. We praise Him, we praise Him. See now the risen one, see the exalted Son. Your hymns of praise and for all the things he's done, for all the things to come to him the end the race. Lift up a shout of praise him with all of the music, praise him in all of the nations, praise him with all of the we praise Him, we praise Him, praise Him with all of your heart, sing, praise Him in this generation, Jesus the light of salvation, we praise Him, we praise Him, we praise Him. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever and ever. 
Right there where you are, can you just with your own words say, Lord, I bless you, Lord, I honor you. Come on, just out of, out of the abundance of your heart, with the love that you have for him, just say, Jesus, I love you. I praise you. You're worthy. We want to teach you a simple chorus. It goes like this. It goes, we praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name For you are holy We praise your name We praise your name We praise your name Jesus, you're holy Holy Jesus, there is none like you. Oh, we honor you. Receive our praise, Lord. Receive our worship, oh Lord. We want to honor you. We want to bless you, God. to honor you we're longing to see your face show us your power come Lord and move in this place let our worship be a fragrance to you our King says to you, holiest one, we praise your power come Lord and move in this place let our worship be a fragrance to our King so we lift our voices to Praise your name. We praise your name. For you are holy. We praise your name. We praise your name. Jesus, you're holy. Oh, we lift up praise to you, Lord. As we lift our voices, we worship.
worship and bless you, God. Receive the honor. Oh, right there where you are, can you bless him? Give him the honor to his name. He is worthy. Receive our praise, God. Oh, we Let our worship be a fragrance to you, our King. And so we lift our voices to you. Jesus, your holy, oh, let's sing it again now. We praise your name, oh, we praise you. We praise your name. Receive the glory and the honor, Lord. We praise your name. For you are holy, oh, we sing. We praise your name. We do praise his name because he is holy. But the psalmist also said, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works unto the children of men. It goes on to say, For he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. Oh, if you need to be satisfied today, if you need goodness to be reigned unto you, I know how you can get it. Offer up the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name, because the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, Father God, we thank you this morning, this evening, whatever time it might be, we praise you, because we will praise the Lord at all times. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we lift you up, that you would remove the shackles that might bind us like you did for Paul and Silas. As we praise you, O oh Lord, let us find ourselves in your presence. Because in your presence, there is a fullness of joy and there are pleasures forevermore. We praise your name because you are worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy of your praise. It's our honor to praise you. It's our privilege to praise you. Our souls are satisfied when we call on your name. To God be the glory for the great things he has done, is doing, and will yet do in Jesus' name. God bless. We praise the Lord with the fruit of our lips, giving praise or thanks unto his name. But the Bible also says that we can praise the Lord by bringing an offering. So as we prepare our hearts to bring our tithes and offerings before the Lord, as always, I want to remind you that the rock is a tithing, but we're also a missions giving church. A tithe is simply 10% of your income. And the Bible makes it clear that the tithe is the Lord. So that's our first priority. But we're also a missions giving church because we want to support the Great Commission of go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And our missions effort does that. 
And you might say, but I don't have much. Well, let's just believe the Lord that maybe you might find some loose change. But let's just believe the Lord that at least once a month we'll be able to give something unto missions. And I'd just like to thank all of you. Thank you for your uh, faithfulness, not just to us, but more importantly to the Lord to believe what he says about uh, worshiping him in our giving and worshiping him in our living. And I also want to thank you because of your efforts to partner with us, The Rock. We've been able to meet many needs. And most importantly, we've been able to spread the gospel, to spread the gospel around the world. Oh, I have a lot of favorite scriptures. You probably hear me use the term, that's my favorite, that's my favorite. But one of my favorites, it's in Psalms chapter 34. I love the whole chapter. But Psalms 34 verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. But you know, when I hear that verse, it says, Oh, taste and see. Well, how do I taste and see that God is good? Well, one way is found in the book of Malachi. Yes, it's in the book of Malachi. We're in the book of Malachi, for it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is nothing more than a place that I place my offerings, that there may be food in my house. But listen to this, and try me, test me, prove me. Now in this, says the Lord of hosts, I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there's not room enough for you to keep it or maintain it or hold it or receive it. God is good and he wants us to test him. He wants us to prove him. He wants us to know that he wants to satisfy our mouth with good things. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And one way to do that is to be faithful in our giving. Why? Because when we give to him, it opens up the highway. It opens up the door for him to give to us. So I encourage you today. You might say, I don't have enough to give. Another way of looking at it, you don't have enough not to give. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for your word. You told us to try you, prove you, test you. You told us that you want to fill our mouth with good things. You want to satisfy the longing souls. And one way to do that is for us just to be obedient unto you. Obedient in giving you our praise of the fruit of our lips. And giving you glory through our tithing and through our offerings. Be glorified. Be lifted up. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray that not only would you bless this gift and multiply it, but you would bless the givers, as well as the gift, as we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And at this time, let's just take a few moments just to listen to or see a short video which will instruct us on different ways to give here at The Rock. Giving is now easier with The Rock app. You can download it in your app store by searching Go to The Rock. Once you're in the app, click Give at the bottom of the page. Select your house church, congregation, or general giving and complete your giving details. Of course, you can always mail in your offering or hand deliver it to our church offices. You can also give on our website, go to therock.com by clicking on Give. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing and helping us reach as many people as possible with God's love. It was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve. Praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise, worthy is your name. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. 
person, into each person, breathe your words. May each of us discern exactly what you are saying to us today by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for somebody that's in a difficult situation. They're under stress. They're under pressure. And yet you are speaking something so encouraging, so comforting. Lord, I, I pray for someone that needs to make an adjustment and quickly. Lord, help them to know exactly what to do, exactly how to posture themselves so they can be blessed by you, protected by you, led by you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for someone who needs healing today, healing in their body. Oh, and, and someone else who needs healing and they're very concerned about what's going on. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing. Healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, be healed in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Lord, I pray for a wife who is very concerned about her family and particularly her marriage. She's concerned about her husband. There's some things going on. They're, they've become somewhat estranged, though they're still living in the same house. There's something not right. There's something off. There's something being held back. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for that wife that you would give her the words to say, the words to pray, so that whatever this wedge is that's been driven between this couple, that it would be dislodged and that you would bring once again unity and alignment back to this couple in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, do your work in that family. May every work of the devil be dismantled and may there be blessing. May there be unity. May the breath of God breathe on that family, on that couple. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is a good God, isn't he? God is a good God. And he knows about each one of our circumstances. 
and he cares. He, he wants to do something to help us, to bless us, but he won't just do it on his own. He needs our participation. He ne needs us to yield to him, to put ourselves before him and say, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. <laughs> He's a good God, but he needs to be sought. He needs to be pursued. Not because he doesn't want to be found, but he wants our hearts to be right when we find him so that we're ready to follow him, ready to obey him. And then he can pour out his blessing upon us and rectify whatever's been going on. And oh, we're going to talk about some of this today because God wants to put things back on track for you and get you down the road where you want to be and where he wants you to be. Praise God. So Lord, speak today through your precious word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, grab a Bible if you've got it, but just before we hold it up, I want to share uh, something that is so important, and that is God has given us at The Rock a, a vision, a fresh vision, and uh, we're really calling this whole thing Operation BFAM, and BFAM stands for two things. It stands for be family, because God wants us to love one another and be family. But be fam also stands for be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God's been speaking this to me for about six years now. And now these things that he's been speaking all these years are coming to pass. These things are coming to pass. So we've got a fresh word from God, a fresh vision of how the Lord wants us to approach the future in light of all this stuff going on in our nation and in the world. I mean, it's getting crazy. I won't take the time to list the things, but you know. Well, the Lord is speaking to us and saying, this is what I want you to do. And so thankfully, we're right on track with the Lord. But now, finally, we have training to train each one of you on what the Lord is saying, how you can be a part of God's plan, be fruitful and multiply with this vision that the Lord has given us here at The Rock. So we have some training dates uh, and uh, this new training is called Basic BFAM Strategy Training. Basic BFAM Strategy Training. And just for short, we call it BBST. And so if you'll go to The Rock app, and if you haven't downloaded The Rock app, please download The Rock app. You can search on the App Store, go to The Rock, and it'll pop right up. Download that. And when you open up The Rock app, Right there on the menu, you'll see BFAM strategy. I think it's the second option. Click on that and it'll give you options to sign up for one of the upcoming BBST training classes. They're free, free. There's seven weeks, it's all on Zoom, okay? So you don't have to go anywhere. They're all on Zoom. The times and the dates uh, that they're starting are right there so that you can sign up. But get registered for one of these BBST training courses and God is going to speak to you. They've been going so well. We've been uh, training the leaders, about 200 leaders, and, and we just open up the Bible and God begins to breathe and speak what he's saying. So I want to encourage you to get on track with that. Some of you have been desiring to be a part of what God is doing. Well, you'll see. Just get into one of these BBS, BBST training courses and you'll see that the Lord is speaking. He, he's breathing by his spirit upon us. And so we're thrilled and excited about that. Well, I've got something good to share with you today. I hope you're ready to receive a word from God. If you have a Bible, I want you to grab it right now and let's hold it up. And it's right there on your screens. Let's declare this together that we have the privilege of having this special book, God's Word, the Bible. Let's say it together. Ready? Go. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Well, I want you to open up once again. If you have your Bible there to a couple of places, find, if you would, Psalm 103, Psalm 103. And then hold your place there and turn over to John chapter 10. And we've been on this little series called The Good Life based on John 10, 10. And 
Psalm 103, the first eight verses. And I want to conclude that today. John chapter 10, verse 10 is where we'll start. John 10, verse 10. And uh, if you're able to, read aloud with me as I read it. And let's let the words of Jesus, this is straight from the lips of Jesus. Let's let the words of Jesus sink down into our hearts. Okay, John 10, verse 10. Let's go. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Oh, let me read it again. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly or that they may have it more abundantly. Now, there's a real devil. There's a real devil and there are real demons. And Jesus is clearly telling us that they are out to destroy. But that's not what Jesus wants to happen. But he's warning us that these things are real. Just because you can't see the enemy doesn't mean he's not real. Listen to what Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8. He said, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I mean, not just to bite, devour. The enemy wants to decimate your life. And he's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week at it. But Jesus said, look, that's what the devil wants to do. But Jesus also tells us that this is the reason he came to destroy the works of the devil. Listen to 1 John 3, 8. The reason that the Son of God appeared was to destroy what the devil does. Now let me read it again. The reason that the Son of God appeared was to destroy what the devil does. So all this stealing, killing, destroying, Jesus said, yeah, I'm coming to destroy that. And he did, of course, through the cross primarily. So Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So now let's look over at the 103rd Psalm, Psalm 103, and let's read these first eight verses. Psalm 103, starting at verse one, here's what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't forget. Don't forget all his benefits. And then he begins to list benefits. Verse three, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. We talked about those a few weeks ago. Who redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. We talked about those as well. Verse six. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. We talked about that last week. That's one of the highlights right there. And here's what we're going to get to today. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. So here are some benefits eight benefits that we've listed in these eight verses. The Lord forgives all your iniquities. Number one. Number two, heals all your diseases. Number three, redeems your life from destruction. Number four, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Number five, satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That includes physical uh, health and financial well-being. Number Six, executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. And then number seven and eight today. Seven, makes known his ways and acts. And number eight, he's merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy or has said. So that's what we're focusing on today. He made known his ways to Moses, verse seven, his acts to the children of Israel. And verse eight, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. Now notice this, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. He made known his ways to Moses, 
his acts to the children of Israel. He, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. So those are two different things. And one might think at first glance that these are just two things on the same level, but they're not. But they're not. God's ways are learned through revelation. God's acts are known by observation. Let me say it another way. God's ways are known by those who are on the inside. But God's acts are seen by those who are on the outside. In other words, you can be outside, you can be an unbeliever and see the acts of God, see the power of God, see the miracles of God. I mean, we, we look out at the sun, the moon, the stars, the sunsets, the sunrises. We watch what happens in this universe. Well, that's the handiwork of God. So we can observe his acts, but only those on the inside know his ways. And so God made his ways known to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. So Moses was the one that was right with God, that pressed into God, that sought God, that wanted to obey God and love God. And they were always trying to convince God and Moses were always trying to convince the rest of Israel to stay with the Lord and to seek the Lord. You remember in Jeremiah 29, 13, the, the Bible says, actually, the Lord says, he said, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart and you will seek me and find me when. Here's when you'll find me, when you search for me with all your heart. See, a lot of people want to know God and they want to know the ways of God, but they don't want to seek him with all of their heart. Their heart is all tied up in money or pleasure or this activity or that crowd or, or something else is on their mind. But they don't really want to search for the Lord and seek him with all of their heart. And God said, no, if you really want to know me, then I have to become the most valuable to you. You have to come to the realization that there's no one in the universe. There's nothing in the universe more important than I am. And when you recognize that, humble yourself and recognize that all life comes from me, all blessing comes from me. Everything you ever desired would come from me. And when you seek me like that and search for me with all your heart, oh, he said, I'll be found by you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I remember the story back in the 12th chapter of Numbers when Aaron and Miriam, uh, Moses' brother and sister, they, they kind of came after Moses and said, hey, you, you know, you're not the only one that can hear God around here. We can hear God, too. And uh, well, the Lord didn't like them doing that. And so here's what happened. The Lord said in Numbers 12, six through eight, he said, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So here, the Lord is talking to Moses' brother and sister and saying, do you know who you're talking to? You're talking pretty big. You're, you're in pride. You're on your high horse because you're trying to say, look, you don't have anything on us. And the Lord's saying, do you realize that my servant Moses has humbled himself before me and the way he walks before me in the fear of the Lord and in obedience, I have had special relationship with him. And here you are, you have not humbled yourself that way. You have not sought me the way he has. You have not been obedient like he has. And yet you wanna exalt yourself and make yourself as if you have the same status with me? The Lord said, no, you don't. No, you don't. Now, of course, the Lord wasn't trying to make them feel bad. He could have told them that a month before, a year before. You don't have the same status as Moses. No, the Lord didn't, wasn't trying to make them feel bad that they're in a different category until they began to push Moses down and say, you're no better than we are. You have no special relationship with God that we don't. And that's when the Lord intervened. That's when the Lord in, injected himself into that conversation and said, you don't know what you're talking about. 
This man has sought me. This man has humbled himself before me. This man has made me valuable in his life. And because of it, I have revealed myself to him in a special way. Really what God is saying, if you had done that or if you would do that, I would reveal myself to you in that same way. But he said, you need to know this is not a normal relationship because Moses is not a normal servant of mine. He's faithful. He loves me. He pursues me. And because of that, I honor him and reveal things to him that others would not know. Boy, this is powerful. So when we see this benefit of God, he makes known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. That's distinguishing that there's another level besides just seeing God move. A lot of people say, oh, I want to see God move. I want to see a move of God. Or some people even say, I want to be in a move of God. OK, well, even seeing or being in a move of God, that doesn't mean that, you know, God's ways. That doesn't mean you're on the inside of what God is saying and doing from the beginning. You're just experiencing what God did. Well, that's better than not experiencing it, certainly. But what's even a higher level is to seek God with all of your heart and for God to be sharing with you what he's thinking, how he is acting and what he's about to do. And that's what he did with Moses. God's ways are learned through revelation. And that's God's choice. His acts are known by observation. You remember Romans eleven thirty three, where Paul said, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. In other words, you could look and look and look and study and study and study and interview everybody in the world for a billion hours and still not know the ways of God until he reveals those ways to you because they're just too magnificent. They're too, they're too high. They're too wide. <laughs> they're too deep. You would never be able to understand unless God opened your comprehension to be able to absorb and, and comprehend what he's saying. I rewrote uh, verse 8, and I want to get to this now. Verse 8 in uh, Psalm 103 says this, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy, abounding in mercy. I went and looked up those key words. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. And I, I re rewrote this. Listen to this. The Lord is very understanding, empathetic and compassionate. He is merciful, kind, and gracious. And he has an overwhelming supply of hesed, unfailing love, and covenant loyalty. Let me read that again. The Lord is very understanding, empathetic, and compassionate. He's merciful, kind, and gracious. And he has an overwhelming supply of hesed. That's a Hebrew word, which means unfailing love and covenant loyalty. Praise God. Praise God. Aren't you glad God's like that? I remember many years ago, it must have been about 25 or 26 years ago now, somewhere around there. And I was working for our denomination and held a position. And, you know, we were working hard. I was traveling, uh, trying to do something that would be of benefit to youth ministries within our denomination, which was the role that I was playing. And I remember I went on a trip and there, were, there was a meeting that was happening with actually uh, denominational leaders of youth ministry. So leaders of youth ministry for lots of different organizations, denominations and such, all coming together in Colorado. And there was gonna be some collaboration. There was gonna be some discussion about uh, what new things are working to reach youth and to empower youth leadership and such churches with uh, insights and such of how to reach and disciple young people and such. And so it wasn't the first of its kind that I had been to in that position. But I was there and uh, but I remember I was in the hotel room there and it was uh, about time one morning to 
you know, gone out. I had gotten up, showered, gotten ready, and, and it was about time to go. But I, I just knew inside something doesn't feel right. And it had nothing to do with that gathering, had nothing to do with that event. It had to do with me, that something didn't feel right. Like, like years I'd been in the ministry before, in local church ministry, youth pastoring and such. And you know when you're in a flow of the Holy Spirit. You know when you're clicking, like when you're in sync with God and you've got the wind at your back and he's working with you and things are just clicking. They're working because God is prospering what you put your hand to. And that was not happening with me. And so I, I just knew something's off, something's wrong. Now, I wasn't in any, you know, uh, uh, immoral situation. I wasn't committing any great sin. It was just something's not working right. And I don't know what it is. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. God made promises to us that if we're willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land and things. And God will bless things and help us. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, but that wasn't happening. And I just knew something is off. Something's wrong. And I just, you know, and I presumed, well, it, it has to do with me because God's always on. God's always right. God's always ready to act. And so rather than walking out the door to go to the meeting, I just made the decision, you know what, that, that can just wait. That's not as important as what needs to happen right now. And I just got down on the floor in that hotel room and I, I just came before the Lord and said, Lord, something's not right. I don't know why, why things are not clicking. They're not working right. Things are not coming together. I need your, your help, Lord. And Lord, whatever I'm doing wrong, I repent. I don't want to do that wrong. And boy, I tell you what, this repentance came over me. And I began to cry. And I began to weep before the Lord. And I, I just confessed anything that I thought that maybe I missed it here, this decision or that decision or whatever, uh, asking somebody to do this role or play that part. And Lord, if I, wherever I missed it, wherever I missed you, oh Lord, forgive me. And I mean, I, I, I probably spent at least an hour just crying and repenting of anything I could think of and just telling the Lord, Lord, it's gotta be me because you're good, you're kind, you're faithful, your promises are true, but there's something wrong with me. And Lord, I, I just feel it. I feel like I'm off somewhere. And oh, I just, I mean, I just laid it before the Lord, just weeping. And I was so tired just from the crying. You know, that just kind of wears you out. And so there I am laying there. And you know what? I, I felt the sweet presence of the Lord come into that room and just begin to minister to me. And it was just like this verse. The Lord is merciful and he's gracious and he's slow to anger and he's abounding in his said love, covenant loyalty. Oh, and I just began to sense the presence of the Lord coming over me in a way that I hadn't been sensing for a while. And you know what happened? I mean, it was within days of that. I began to get some ideas, some downloads from the Lord about what we needed to do and how we needed to rethink something and, and got some insight as to what we needed to do. And guess what happened? Things started clicking. I mean, people that were not in unity and not on board, began to get on board. Well, they weren't on board because it wasn't quite ready. It wasn't right. I had to get some downloads from the Lord. I had to hear from the Spirit of God. And I heard from the Spirit of God. And guess what? This one, that one, the other one. And people started coming into alignment and getting behind it and saying, yeah, we need to do that. And th I mean, it was like God opened up the double doors. And all of a sudden, everything I'm doing is working. Even, even people that they didn't want to get on board. They saw no option. Why? We got to get on board with this. Why? Because this is God. Everybody can see it's God. It was just a beautiful thing the way the Lord did it. See, he was so compassionate, so gracious, so merciful, so kind, slow to anger. He didn't beat me down. But see, until I got into a position to receive of his goodness, he couldn't do it. No, because I just kept doing my own thing, not meaning to. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is death. See, the way I was going seemed like it was the right way, but it wasn't the right way. And thank God, the Holy Spirit inside was letting me know this is not right. You're not on the right track. It's not clicking right. 
You need to humble yourself. You need to repent. And so thank God I did. And when I did, here comes the mercy of God. Here comes the Hesed, covenant loyalty of God. Here comes the graciousness and the kindness and the compassion of God. And stands me up, clears the way in front of me, sets me on the right course and just pours out his blessing. Isn't God good? See, this is one of the benefits that the psalmist said, don't forget this. He's like this. If you'll humble yourself, if you'll seek him, if you'll lay it on the line before him, oh, he's like this. This is what he'll do. This is how he'll, he'll respond. Praise the Lord. I remember hearing a minister talk uh, some years ago. And uh, this is somebody that I respect so highly. But he told a story so transparently. He said, uh, back how, however many years ago, it was decades. He said, uh, I was young in the ministry. He said, I had learned, I had you know, been educated, studied the word and such. And he said, I, I just love to preach the word. He said, but the Lord was leading me to go out on the road. He said, I've, I've done a little of that. He said, to go out on the road and begin to go to different ministries and churches and to preach and teach. He said, but I, I didn't want to do that because that, that's hard. That's a hard life. You know, you're traveling all the time. Plus, when you're something of more of an evangelist, well, you don't have a constant place to go. You don't have constant pay or income because you're going to get compensated wherever you go to preach and you're going to get com compensated however they compensate you. And in all honesty, a lot of ministries don't compensate very well. They don't, they don't give honorariums or love offerings or, or such very well. Some do, some don't. And it's hit and miss. He did not want that life, that lack of consistency, that lack of uh, something that was dependable, the rhythm of income and such. He just didn't want it, but he felt that's what the Lord was saying to do. Well, during this process, he was invited to become the pastor of a little church in the South. Well, he prayed about it, put it before the Lord and such, and he did not get a sense that the Lord wanted him to go, but he wanted to go. And so, guess what? He accepted the position. And he moved down there and he assumed the role of pastoring and he began to work and work and preach and work and work and guess what? And he struggled. And he struggled and he struggled and he struggled. But then he just continued to work harder and preach harder and preach better and do his best to lead that church and to minister to that church. And what happened? He struggled more, struggled more. And down inside, he didn't want to admit it, but he knew I'm out of the will of God. I'm not in the right place. So he pastored for a couple of years and finally he realized, man, what am I doing? I need to follow the Lord. I need to get on the Lord's plan. And so he repented before the Lord. Now, he wasn't in any immorality. He wasn't committing some grave sin, but he's not following the plan of God. And so he humbled himself. He repented before the Lord. He came before that church and he said, I need to admit something to you that I never did get direction from the Lord to come here. And so I'm here and I'm struggling. Things are not going right because I'm not in the will of God. And so uh, as of today, I'm resigning. I'm going to get myself back into the will of God. And uh, so he, he did that. Of course, there were some folks there that told him, no, no, don't do that. Stay here. Well, it'll work out. You know, keep going. But he finally admitted, no, it's not going to work out. No, I can't be out of sync with God and be blessed by God at the same time. I've got to be on track with him. I've got to be in his plan. And so what did he do? He resigned. He walked away from a steady income. Wasn't large, but at least it was steady. Walked away from a steady congregation to preach to. And he went back out by faith to do what God had called him to do. Well, you know, today, this man is in a flourishing ministry. He pastors out, out of the country where God had called him, you know, in recent years, and he has an absolutely flourishing ministry in a country that you would think <laughs> you can't even have a church or a ministry there, but he does. And his church is thousands. In fact, they've opened up multiple campuses. They've been multiplying. And this man is known around the world as a teacher of teachers. He has revelation. There are many people that follow him 
internationally today. Why? Because he humbled himself, he sought the Lord, he repented, and guess what happened? The Lord was gracious. The Lord was merciful. The Lord was slow to anger. Didn't beat him down because he missed it. And the Lord was abounding with his said covenant loyalty. And when he humbled himself and sought the Lord and got back on track, here comes the blessing of the Lord. Here comes the goodness of God, the grace of God. See, this is the way God is. Don't forget this benefit. And sometimes we'll forget, so we'll just keep going the way we're going, but it's not working. And we need to remember, if you'll just repent and come back to the Lord and get, get on track, doesn't even mean you're not saved. Maybe you're not, maybe you are, but you're not on track with the Lord. And if you seek him and get on track with the Lord, oh, this is how he'll treat you. This is how he is. He's not just gonna stand there and say, should have listened to me. No, I'm just gonna let you struggle for years. No, no, that's just not how he is. You may have to reap a little bit of what you've sown, but while you're reaping it, the blessing of the Lord will be there because this is how he is. He's so good. I remember my parents telling me the story about how my dad, ever since he got saved, I mean, he was, he was saved from a not good lifestyle. But ever since he got saved, I mean, he got genuinely born again. And the Lord delivered him right away from smoking. And uh, he stopped drinking and partying. But he wanted so badly to preach. He wanted everybody to know what he'd experienced. But unfortunately, the Lord did not call him to be a pastor. But he wanted so badly to be in the ministry. So early on in my parents' marriage, uh, my dad had an offer. Somebody invited him to come to New Mexico and to pastor a church and to come preach. Oh, he wanted to do it and he wanted it to be the will of God so bad. And so they prayed, you know, but they didn't really get clarity, but he just felt like, oh man, here's an opportunity to minister for the Lord. I want to do it. So they packed up. My mom forfeited a promotion on her job and they packed up, left California and went to New Mexico and they're starting to work in the ministry, but something wasn't right. Something wasn't clicking. Things were not falling into place like they should. And so because of it, they began to personally struggle, struggle in their own finances, struggle in their own relationship. And they knew something's not right. And so finally my dad, oh, thank God he humbled himself. He told my mom, I'm gonna lock myself in this room and I'm gonna fast and pray until I hear God. Don't bother me. Don't bring any food to me. If I need something, I'll let you know. But just leave me alone because I've got to get a hold of God and find out what's going on. And he did. And he locked himself in and he fasted and he prayed and he sought the Lord. And about three days later, he came out of there and he let my mom know we're out of the will of God. We missed it. We're not supposed to be here. And she had also received confirmation she talked to our pastor back in California and he'd given some wisdom and some insight and such. And so what did they do? They humbled themselves. They resigned. They said, we're sorry. We uh, put you through all this, but this is not where we're supposed to be. And they came back to California and my mom humbled herself and went back and asked for her job back. And she didn't get the promotion, but she did get a job. And later on she got promoted. But then my dad went and he got a job. He landed a job at McDonnell Douglas Aerospace Company and uh, worked there for 30 some years. And here he wanted to be in the ministry, wanted to be a pastor, but he humbled himself. They humbled themselves, got into the will of God and said, Lord, we just want to do what you want us to do, whatever that is. And guess what? They raised three sons and all three of those sons pastor fruitful churches today. So here their ministry by being in the will of God, doing their part, doing what God had called them to do. Of course, they were involved in church and you know, ministry all along the way, but they worked their jobs. See, they, they got back into alignment with what God had called them to do. And now what's happening? They see in the family, the blessing. They see in the family, the fruitfulness, the ministry that's happening. And so, yeah, I thank God that He's done what he's done in my life. And I know what I had to do to humble myself and to come before the Lord and to seek him. But I also look at my parents and say, oh, 
But we have to go back before me and to see that somebody else had humbled themselves and got into the will of God. And there's blessing that began to come. Faithfulness. And so part of what's happening with me and my brothers is God's faithfulness, his mercy, his grace, his grace, his kindness, his has said covenant loyalty to my parents who humbled themselves and said, Lord, we want to do it your way. And we're going to put our trust that your benefits of doing it your way are going to be more than enough. And of course they are. Praise God. Of course they are. I want us to pray right now. I don't know what God is saying to you, but I know he's speaking. I know he's speaking. God's offering his benefits. And particularly this last one. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in his said covenant love and loyalty. Praise God. Bow your head with me right where you are. And I'm going to ask you as I pray, would you also pray? Come before the Lord. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We humble ourselves before you today. And first of all, we thank you that you are a good God. You are this kind of a God. You are merciful. You are kind. You are compassionate. You are gracious. You are slow to anger. Oh, and you're abounding. You're overflowing with that has said covenant loyalty that says to us, I'm For you, because of my covenant with you, I am disposed to mercy. I am disposed to love. I am disposed to kindness, compassion, empathy, understanding. I'm disposed to bless you. I'm disposed to help you. In fact, I believe the Lord is saying right now, the reason you're even sensing what you're sensing right now and being drawn to come before the Lord, to humble yourself and repent, the Lord said, That's my covenant loyalty to you to help you to get on the right track. Go with it, says the Lord. That's me wooing you, leading you, urging you, prompting you so you can be blessed, so I can be your shepherd, so I can pour out my blessing upon you, says the Lord. Praise God. Lord, I pray for each person who is praying, humbling themselves before you today. In the name of Jesus, minister to them. Oh, speak your words to them. Tell them what they need to do, what needs to be changed, what needs to be altered, what needs to be repented of, what needs to be rectified, what needs to be cut off, stopped. Lord, speak clearly so that your servants can get into alignment with you and experience this flow, this breath, this blessing. May their cup run over in the name of Jesus because you're a good God. You're a good God, merciful, gracious, slow to anger and abounding and has said covenant love and loyalty. Praise God. We bless you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I tell you, anyone who is following and listening and you're making that commitment to the Lord, stick with us. Don't disconnect and just expect, well, God will just connect with me and lead me himself. Well, yes. God does lead us, but God also has told us that in these last days, it says in Hebrews 10, 25, let us not neglect coming together in church, in fellowship with the other believers and to do it so much the more as you see the day of Jesus coming approaching. And so I want to invite you to partner with us here in this ministry. Partner with us. Become locked in. If you're not, if you don't already have a home church somewhere, if you do, well, praise the Lord. Wherever the Lord's leading you, be there. Stay plugged in. But if you don't, stay locked in with us right here. And let me invite you once again to get trained through BBST, Basic BFAM Strategy Training. It's a free seven-week Zoom training course. And you can go to the website 
we'll put it right there on the screen there. Go to that website and get signed up for the next basic BFAM strategy training course. And, and let's just look into the Word of God and let God train us for how He wants to use us in ministry in this day and age. And I tell you, God's, God's about to do a mighty, mighty work in the earth. And He's giving you the opportunity, saying, come on, come on, grab my hand. Let's be a part of this. Let's do this together and watch what the Lord does. Our God is a good God. And thankfully, He wants us to be a part. Let's lean in and let's be a part of what God wants us to do. I bless you today in Jesus' name. And I look forward to being back with you. I've got something very important to share with you next week, so don't miss it. Thank you so much for being here today. If you haven't already, let me encourage you to download the Rock app. You can do that by searching Go to the Rock in your app store. And once you have the app, there's a couple of things I want to highlight because we want to take action on what God is speaking and moving us to as a church family right now. First of all, if you don't know the vision that we announced, Pastor Jerry and Kimberly announced this last week, you can click on Vision 2021. It's amazing. God is moving and speaking. So click on that to get up to date. Also, you can sign up right there for our BFAM strategy training. Be a part of it. I'm actually a part of this first, uh, this first session. It is amazing yay, even life-changing. So be a part of it. You can sign up for that right there. You can also right there in the app, you can share the notes from today's teaching or share the video of today's teaching with other people. So you can do that right there in the app or on go to the rock. Dot com. And lastly, if you are here in the Southern California area or in the Western half of the United States and you love road trips, come and join us on Sunday mornings live for service at 10 a.m. And we will see you either at Sunday morning service or right here online next week. God bless you.